Music City Online. Today we have Liz Rogers with us. Liz has a company called Anacrusis. And as I understand it, you have a background in publishing too, doing song plugging before you formed your own company. Correct. Yeah. And a degree from Vanderbilt with a lot of interning throughout the industry. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, so uh, what attracted you to form your own company and tell us a little bit about what your company is and what you do. Yeah, um, Anacrusis is primarily a licensing focused publishing company. So mm -hmm. we're a licensing, boutique licensing company, really small artist focused roster. And we recently expanded to include artist development as well. So Excellent. Um, it's a pretty unique um, publishing company in the general sense, since mm -hmm. we don't do a lot of song plugging. Coming from a publishing background, right. it's a little bit of a shift. But I am pitching every day. It's just to a different market. So. Yeah. Uh, do you are, do you pitch uh, film, TV, commercials, video games? Pretty much all across the board. Media, uh, trailers. Yep. All of that exactly. <laughs> and that, of course, is an area near and dear to my heart because I've been doing that for almost twenty five years now. Yeah. So uh, obviously very familiar with that and uh, love that area. Although it seems like a big mystery to most writers and artists. It is, yeah. It's definitely yeah. something that people have a lot of questions about when they first meet mm -hmm. with me. And um, a right. lot of people will just kind of ask if I can have a coffee to sit down and kind of tell them about <laughs> what I do. <laughs> what attracted you to to get into the licensing? What, what was it that you, that you, you know, that, that attracted you to it? Yeah, um, from the time I was really young, I wanted to do talent scouting. And cool. when I was younger, I think that was a vague yeah. definition of, you know, a part of the music industry that I really didn't even understand. Yep. But I loved um, kind of casting and finding mm -hmm. new talent. And uh, when I came to Nashville, I quickly found myself in the music industry. And I had a couple internships in publishing and licensing. Mm -hmm. um, and the licensing was at a small label, and so I kind of got my feet wet in there. And then when I got a job in publishing, I really loved the writer development and the signing mm -hmm. new writers and kind of pitching that and yeah. working with them. And uh, that was kind of the, for me, I fell more into a pop and rock passion. That's my, my main passion right. is not country music. Mm -hmm. um, I love country. <coughs> I worked in country for four years, and I definitely have a lot of respect for it. But when it comes to what I want to sign and want to make my company yeah. about, um, it was more on the alternative spectrum. So I kind of set out and signed a couple yeah. writers just on my own to, to see what I could do and how I could help connect them and mm -hmm. um, writer artists and writer producers and cool. um, just started sending their stuff to some supervisors. Cool. Yeah. And, and in all due honesty, the, in licensing, especially to TV and film, and gaming country music only occupies about six percent of the market. So, um, you know, other than CMT, uh, RFD, uh, uh, the show Nashville, you know, or a handful of very specific niche shows that. Right. Yeah. Well, there are there are a lot of movies where people stop at a road house yeah. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere and there's a jukebox playing a honky tonk. Yeah, we don't get calls yeah. for those though. Yeah. Even if I right. had a couple country acts, I don't think, yeah. you know, those are going to be catalog they're, or they're library not, or just thrown in kind of. Yeah, because <laughs> it, film and TV scenes. can be very um, stereotyping and they tend, for those scenes, they almost always want like what would be, what, 70s? Yeah, or a classic song. A yeah. honky tonk mm -hmm. country, yeah, exactly. So. so, so what is a normal day like for you? What's the normal work day? Um, it's a lot of phone calls and emails. Yeah. Um, primarily a lot of research online. I'm always, mm -hmm. um, before I send any email, I always check on who I'm emailing. So if they have anything that's more right. current or more up to date, I'm always going to do a quick mm -hmm. check about when I last emailed them and our last conversations. And so even sending one email could take 20 to 30 minutes of a right. little bit of research. So um, those emails yeah. add up quickly. And before you know it, that's most of my morning. Yeah. And, uh, and just communicating with artists, we are getting ready for South by Southwest next week. So a lot of my day is Sweet. spent finalizing details for our mm. showcase and finalizing things with the artists and um, that kind of thing, so. Excellent, so 
you will be showcasing artists at South by Southwest. We have an official um, venue, an official show. So cool. Anna Crucis, yeah, it's Sweet. kind of exciting, kind of kind of yeah. nerve wracking at the same time, yeah. but <laughs> it's an exciting event. Yeah, we're bringing down six Very bands. Cool. All of us are going to wow. fly down and stay. Most of us in one big house. <laughs> Sweet. So it'll Excellent. be it'll be a lot of fun. Well, yeah, it'll <laughs> <laughs> be so much fun. That's gonna. Yeah. So that's what my day to day has been like the last two weeks. Yeah. It's been wrapping up things and finalizing that. And by the way, I'm glad that you mentioned about, you know, doing your homework because that's one of the biggest things that writers and artists don't understand about film and TV is, you know, here in Nashville, you can phone a record label in A&R and say, you know, what are you looking for or who are you looking for? But it's the biggest no-no in the world to phone a music super so and say, true. what are you looking for? Because to them that is a big red warning flag that you haven't done your homework and you may be unfamiliar with the industry at, at, exactly yeah. and you're not likely to get the call answered the next mm -hmm. time that you call you have very important to do your homework exactly. like, there's a um, networking book i've read that yeah. advocates something very similar that's yeah. do your homework and mm -hmm. know in a not in a stalking way but if you know right, if you have a right. dog or you love running exactly. or whatever then maybe mention that in your first mm -hmm. happenstance meeting. Um, mention that, exactly. oh, my dog is, you know, whatever, whatever. And then, yep. oh, I have a dog as well, kind of tying it in. So, right. uh, very, But very it's important. so much about getting them to listen to the music. Yes. And you have to do something uh -huh. sometimes out of, the ordinary, out of the ordinary. Speaking of the music, what about new trends? Any new trends that you see showing up or that you perceive are gaining momentum? Um, the main trend that we've seen really in the last couple of years, but it's really taken off uh -huh. in a major way, um, are covers. Really stripped mm -hmm. down, really cool yeah. takes on the original. Um, and we've had a lot of success with those, and you're seeing cool. TV shows like Grey's Anatomy that's done nothing but covers this yes. season. Yeah. Um, a whole bunch of trailers <coughs> that are doing really cool covers. So yeah. I'd say that's a big trend in the supervision world. In terms of pop and... Uh, trends, I, I love everything that's electronic, so there's a cool like new electro soul kind of trend that's happening, kind of a soul pop electro, yeah. and then a more like soul funk um, over big beats and that kind of thing. Right. And, yeah. well, what about, uh, what about a, give us a fun fact about yourself, so something that people who know you may not know about you that might surprise them or mm. be fun or interesting. Well, this is something that we briefly just talked about um, mm -hmm. before we kind of started, but I, I surprisingly am an opera, I'm an opera oh, yes. performance background, um, and I, I was a double major in opera performance and musical theater, yeah. and uh, most of my cool. bands, some of my bands don't even know that I performed, um, and I, I yeah. went and performed at the Sydney Opera House. I was studying in, in oh, Sydney, sweet. Australia. Sweet. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a fun, that's definitely a, a fun place. fact. That I come from the performance side, uh -huh. um, although I knew I never wanted a career in it. I kind of always yeah. did it to understand more of the performance side and be mm -hmm. a better manager potentially someday yeah. or a better artist development, whatever. Cool. So, yeah. So what about uh, what about what's the best advice that anyone's ever given you in the, in the, about oh. music or the music business? Hmm. Or maybe the best advice you've ever given one of your acts. That's tough. Um, well, one of the things that my old boss said to me once, um, mm -hmm. and it always stuck with me, is it takes a hundred no's before you hear a yes. And sometimes it's a thousand yeah. no's before you hear a yes. And yeah. it's staying positive and finding the optimism and the drive in every single one of those no's before you get to that yes. And finding what yeah. it is that keeps you going and what it is that you learn from each of those no's and can move forward to eventually get to that yes. And that's true in pitching, it's true with artists who are looking for a, the right manager, yeah. the right label, the right whatever. Um, <coughs> so yeah, I think that's one of the things that I always cling to that, oh, I'm this is no number 72. Like, yep. How do you find new acts and new artists? So much of it is word of mouth. It's mm -hmm. um, trusted people that are working yep. with cool new bands that say you got to check these guys out mm -hmm. um a lot of it is just the inner circle i'm out at a show probably four to five nights a week yep um checking out new bands and whenever one of my bands is playing seeing who's out who else is on the bill who's mm -hmm. opening and who's mm -hmm. headlining and 
um, always being aware of yep. that new up and coming scene here in town because there's so much more pop and rock coming up. New places that open up, new acts. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So. Oh yeah, and I, we I work with a lot of producers, <clears throat> so they're often in the know before us as well because they're cool. producing some of the up and comings, which is really exciting to cool. kind of hear those first demos and. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So, so well, what about, uh, you've got a new Shark Tank coming up on Who Knew this next fall? This yes. fall? Yeah. yeah. Um, so this past fall, we had the first ever Who mm-hmm. Knew Shark mm-hmm. Tank style pitch. Right. We're calling it the pitch. And um, yep. I am the musical director, really fortunate to have brought onto, been brought onto that team. Um, Tom Truitt heads up Who Knew, and yep. he's wonderful. Um, he is. He's yeah. a guy. Yeah, we know so I well. am. I've been brought in kind of as a musical director, and we put on this event that was specifically about mm-hmm. educating the Nashville community on what supervisors do and what they look for. And mm-hmm. it was a really successful event. Um, it was both educational and inspirational. I think oh, yeah. um, everyone had a great time. A lot of the artists who performed have seen great success already. Cool. Um, sync placements and big advertising things. Yeah. And so. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I I love the uh, when the first artist got done performing, um, the gal from Electronic Arts, you know, she, she was actually performing for I think it may have been Dawn at ABC, but you know, and the other girl spoke up and said, "I want the song." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that was perfect because that was exactly. I mean, it was that's you know, made it really entertaining. Yeah. You know, so. And also Which, quite realistic, <clears throat> you know, hearing what it mm-hmm. is that they discuss and what they're looking for and. Yeah. Talking about clearance and talking about, right. um, you know, all the different things that are the follow up once you actually send the song and they like mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, anything else that you'd like to tell us about your company? You know, what what you see coming down the pipe in the future for your company? You know, what's anything? Yeah, um, we have a lot of we have a big exciting year ahead of us. Um, there are some, we're, we're focusing really intensely on the licensing mm-hmm. and trying to not expand too quickly. Right. Um, but there is potential for uh, um, yeah. adding a couple cool new exciting things um, and signing a couple new bands. We have about a dozen bands on the roster, so it's still pretty niche and cool. very intimate. We're all kind of a family, um, talk to all the bands quite regularly, which is really cool. cool. So. If you're going to have, let's say, a dinner party at your house, mm-hmm. name three songs that would definitely be on the playlist. Ooh, not where I thought you were going with that question. <laughs> huh. Songs or artists or? Either one. Um, that is so hard. I might have to uh, get back to you. I'm thinking, <laughs> thinking of some artists that I'm really into right now. Um, well, if you're like me, the you know, playlist would change every day. Yeah, and yeah. I'm going to be a little selfish. I think I'd probably put my <coughs> own artists slip yeah, into that playlist. Exactly right. So, uh, yeah. There's a really cool band that I just uh-huh. signed, um, and they're signed to Universal, mm-hmm. and uh, their name's Drawing North. And they're really, cool. really fun, big pop anthemic songs. Um, and they had a single that just came out last week, and I'd probably Excellent. put that on there. Uh, cool. It's called Save Your Love. And I have a, another band that I'm working with. They, uh, they had a record come out last year. They're called Kind. And they have a really mm-hmm. fun song that they've recently done a couple remixes. They put out a B-side of all remixes. Um, and I'd probably put their... Gloss, their single Gloss on my on my playlist, and uh, and we have a, a re- record that just came out actually last week. Jameson Elder, he's mm-hmm. also a Nashville artist, and his solo record came out, debut record. It's a great record, um, and I'd probably put one of the singles from that on my playlist as well. Cool, so, there Excellent. you go. Very good. Yeah. Well, I think that about wraps it up. So, um, if uh, you are the hottest new band. <laughs> operating around the Nashville area right now, and uh, you need to get into some licensing and stuff, you know who to find, right? Yeah, Liz thanks. Rogers and Anna Crucis. Oh, by the way, would you care to explain the <laughs> meaning of the word Anna Crucis? Anna Crucis and is, um, <clears throat> it is actually a music theory word. It's a mm-hmm. 
the official word for the upbeat, the pickup note before the right. downbeat of a piece of music. And it was a word that I always mm-hmm. loved. I just, <laughs> it stuck with me from the first time I heard it, and I thought it was so cool and um, obscure. Like a people, Greek god or yeah, something. Yeah, people don't yeah. know the word. I've had two people yeah. since I started the company uh, mention it, and one was a percussionist. He knew you know, right. and one was my high school music teacher. She was so <laughs> proud. <laughs> so everyone else is very confused about where it came from, but it is. That's um, funny. It kind of ties into the slogan, which is That's we're cool. ahead of the music. So it goes yeah. in with that and music discovery. And uh, yeah. Excellent. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll Thanks see you in the me. studio. Okay. Yeah. Thanks.